and that was not joyful. All right, let's do this again from the top. Go ahead and click it off. Glory to God. I don't know what kind of church you might be used to tonight. Hallelujah. But we don't do restaurant music around here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've come to praise Him. I've come to praise Him. 
I never take this platform to tickle your ears. I never come up here to just sing a song to you. Hallelujah. I come to lead you in a song. Hallelujah. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I've just got to sing that one part one more time. And you're not going to get tired of it because it's a song from the Lord. Hallelujah. And tomorrow you're going to be walking through your house. You're going to be like this. You turned my sadness into gladness. You turned my soul. Yes, you did, Jesus. Into joy. I'm singing. I'm going to dance while I wash my dishes. Child for. Now I'm going to work and I'm going to say, turn my sadness into gladness. Come on. You turned my sorrow. to me. Come on. We should be filling this atmosphere with praise. Come on and lift your voice and tell him how good he's been to you. How glorious and wonderful he is. Come on and lift your voice and say, God, I magnify you. God, I glorify you. Hallelujah. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on around me tonight, my God is still good. My God is still good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that there is joy in your presence. I thank you for the peace of God that rules and reigns in our hearts and in our minds. Right now, I thank you for the shalom of God. I thank you, Father, that where there's been chaos and fear, that right now peace is causing that to be dispelled in the minds and the hearts of your people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are our peace speaker. You are our peace speaker. Hallelujah. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Hallelujah. One more time, why don't you just lift those hands and say, God, I just love you. Can you tell him tonight, Lord, I just love you with all of my heart. Everything that's in me tonight, God, I surrender to you. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender all in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing worth worrying about tonight. I cast my cares on you. There's nothing worth anxiety and fear for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. My mind is sound. Come on and say that. My mind is sound. My mind is sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel the, the spirit of God wanting us to pray for one another. Before we move to the next song, can you grab hands with your neighbor, please? Just right across the rows. Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. Thank you for your presence, Father. Lord, we lift up our brothers. We lift up our sisters right now in your presence. We ask you to strengthen and encourage every heart in this room. We ask you to strengthen and encourage every family that's represented right here in this place. Father, your word says to ask anything in your name and it shall be given to us. There is nothing impossible with our God. We turn our attention to you in this moment. 
And we say, God, may you be the God of the impossible in the lives of our brothers and our sisters. The things that they desire, the things that they're praying for, the things that they yearn for in the depths of their soul, God. I thank you that you hear the cries of the righteous. And your word says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So right now we declare that our sister, our brother is delivered tonight. Delivered from the affliction of the enemy. Delivered from torment and fear. And I thank you that my brothers and my sisters are being made strong in your presence. They are being filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the power of God. Filled with the peace of God. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord, that you are the lifter of your church. And tonight, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for lifting our family, our family of God in this house tonight in strength and in glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. It was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore.
Glory to God. His presence is here right now. His righteous, holy, indescribable presence is here right now. His anointing, his tangible presence. And it's in that anointing, it's in that place of his presence that the Bible says bondages are broken. Bodies are healed. Revelation, knowledge, and understanding flows. You see things differently. You understand things differently. Addictions are broken. The darkness and the pride and the arrogance and the anger of the spirit of this world that cannot stand in the place of his presence. I want us to sing this one more time. Just close your eyes, open up your heart, and just enjoy his presence. Cry out to him and love on him. Your Lord and your Savior, your Redeemer, your Messiah, your Creator, your freedom. He is your liberty. He is your joy. He is your peace that passes all understanding. He is your healer. He is your restorer. He is your wisdom. He is favor unto you. He is your very life. It's in you that, le that you live and move and have your very being and your essence. Don't just add him to the mix of your life. Surrender the entirety of your life to everything that your creator is. Let your creator be your father. The father that many of you perhaps never had in this earthly realm. And there may be some that are here tonight. You say, oh, I had a... I had a wonderful father. I have a great father. And that's beautiful. But your relationship with your heavenly father is so much greater, so much deeper. It is eternal in nature. Long after this temporary life is done and gone in this earthly realm, you will be with your father for all of eternity. Can we just sing this one more time and just, just cry out to the Lord? Just honor him and just receive everything that he has for you tonight, right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah.
church of Jesus Christ to begin to get more real with God than we've ever gotten before. Hallelujah. He desires your heart tonight. He desires your heart tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, will you get real with him in his presence? Let's sing it together. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above the names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our He is worthy of all praise. And he alone is God. He alone is God. Hallelujah. He is the I am tonight. He is the I am tonight. Idols are coming down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. you. We don't approach God on our terms, we approach God on His terms. And he, he is holy. He is righteous. He is loving and merciful and filled with grace. He is all powerful. He is perfect in all of his ways. And tonight, right now in his presence, every eye closed right now, right where you're at, I'm hearing this in my heart, the holy, righteous presence of the Lord. He's here in a beautiful way. The Holy Spirit is here to break bondages. Uh, and I want some ushers to help me, and I feel like there's several of you. Maybe everybody in the place, I don't know. <laughs> there's some things you're dealing with. Maybe you've dealt with them for, for years and years. Anger or lust or pride. Or sexual sin. Addiction. I don't know what it might be. Jealousy, rage, envy. This is not about anybody else here. Forget about everybody else around you. There, there's a moment right now, and, and I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to agree with you, but it's not about me. The, the holy presence of the Lord is here. And by the Spirit of God, I've never said it this way before. But he is here, and he will break bondages, and he will bring freedom in your life like you've never experienced before. 
but you have to approach him on his terms. You have to step out by faith and just simply say, Lord, that's me. I surrender all. I surrender all. If that's you tonight, I want to pray for you. If that's you tonight, just come on down here. Usher, y'all help me out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I, I just feel in my heart there's a bunch of you. Will you get real with the Lord tonight? This is not about anybody else around. There's an opportunity tonight. You're going to experience a freedom in your life that you've been longing for, that you've been crying out for. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. I'm just, I'm just the reporter tonight. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. <laughs> oh, glory. There's such joy. <laughs> Woo, there is such joy. I said there is such joy. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a freedom. There is a joy. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a freedom. There is a joy. There is a healing. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We bless you. We bless you. We praise you. Glory, glory. you've said yes. Lord, the Lord says you've said yes. <laughs> and his blessing will be on your family. <laughs> oh, you'll see breakthroughs this year. You'll see answered prayer this year. Breakthroughs. The Lord says this family has said yes. <laughs> there'll be a joy. Breakthroughs. The favor of the Lord will flow. Ah, uh -huh. ah, uh -huh. Glory, 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 glory to God. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> a lasting freedom. A lasting freedom. An inner work, an inner joy, an inner peace. Oh, glory. The struggle, the struggle, the struggle. Leave it behind you, the Lord says. For this is a new day. Hallelujah. This is a new hour. And his glory will come upon and flow through your life as you've never experienced before. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, The freedom of the Lord. <laughs> ah, the joy of the Lord. The freedom of the Lord, the freedom of the Lord. Oh, healing, restoration, the restoration of the Lord, the restoration. Oh, glory, glory, glory. The restoration of the Lord, the restoration. Glory, 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 gl
in the name of Jesus. I break every bondage of shame in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let there be joy, restoration, healing, health. Power of the Holy Ghost flowing upon and within and through. Oh, ha, ha, ha. And even at the house. <laughs> oh, yeah, even at the house. Oh, the the family, the spouse, the marriage, the cry of your heart. The Lord says, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm moving. <laughs> he said, I'm moving, I'm moving. Glory, glory, oh, glory, 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 glory. I'm there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll show you. I'll show you my glory. I'll show you my presence. Stay in my presence. Seek my face. Seek my way. Glory. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. The gift of God. The grace of the Lord. The call of God. The purpose of God. The vision of the Lord. Coming forth. The Lord says he's, he's, he's pleased with you. Oh, hallelujah. You've said yes in your heart. He said he'll direct your steps. He says be at peace. Follow him. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. Glory. Oh. Glory to God. Ah, uh ha, -huh. A feeling. A feeling. A feeling. Uh -huh. A feeling. A feeling. A feeling. cry has been for the Lord. He has heard and he will answer. Glory to God. It's only just begun. The joy. The joy. The joy of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. The strength of a revelation. Uh -huh, a revealing of who he is. A revealing of who he is. A revealing. Oh glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! A freedom, a freedom in a joy, 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 a freedom in a joy.
joy and a peace. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, you are more real than the concrete we're standing on. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you're revealing yourself unto us in greater and deeper ways. Greater and deeper ways. When nobody else is around, as King David, as King David proclaimed, when I'm alone in my bed with the Lord at night, when nobody else is around, the Lord. Oh, the meditation of our heart. Yeah. The meditation of our heart. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's a freedom. There's a freedom. There's a freedom. Oh, there's an understanding. There's a strength. There's a grace in the Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord. You're raising up a generation. A generation that knows you generation that will be strong and not back down, a generation that will stand for your holy ways, your righteous ways, your righteous ways, a generation that will stand for the ways of the Lord. Oh, glory, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Now let's just Let's just open up our mouths and just thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place tonight. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we respect you. We receive from you, and we will respond to you. His presence is, it's holy. His presence is righteous. And when we simply respond in humility to the presence of the Lord, it enables him to come in and, and change us in ways that we can never do in our own intellect or our own flesh. A moment in the presence of the Lord is worth a thousand years of hard toil in the flesh. He can change you. He can rearrange you. He can change circumstances in a moment. Just like that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He told us this would be a year of order and grace and his glory. As we humbly submit to his ways and say yes to change, yes to rearrangement, yes in every area of our lives. And his grace will say, I'll help you. I'll strengthen you. I'll enable you. I'll open up doors. I'll, I'll set you free. I'll make a way. And his glory will flood in. Hallelujah. The glory of God in your household. Can we proclaim that right now? If you're here with your family, grab hands with them, wherever they may be. And I realize some of you may be here, you may not have family, or you may be single or live alone. If, if there's somebody alone, like this, then grab hands with somebody else, like Josie. And, and, uh, 
Hallelujah. I'll grab hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's stand up with your family. Come on in. Grab hands together. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's proclaim this together right now. Say, I proclaim the glory of God over my life and my household. I humble myself under the mighty hand of God. I proclaim the mighty name of Jesus. I say that Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord of my household. Jesus is Lord over my decision. Jesus is Lord over my money. Jesus is Lord over my job. Jesus is Lord over my family and my children. Jesus is Lord over everything I do. Everything I set my hands to. Jesus be Lord. 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 Jesus be Lord over what I watch over what I set my eyes on, over what I listen to, over what I take into my heart and my spirit. Jesus be Lord. Jesus be Lord in my daily life, the decisions I make, the places I go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Jesus be Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord says this, that there are some of you here tonight. You have humbled your heart and you have said yes, and you will never be the same again. Hallelujah. You're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to go through your day and you're going to say, I see differently. You'll say, I, I hear differently. That thing that bound you yesterday will no longer bind you another day of your life. There is a freedom and a joy that has come. There is a freedom and a joy that has come to your life. And it is the joy of the Lord that is your strength. And it is the strength and the grace of the Lord that will keep you even in those times of trouble, even in those times of temptation, it is the joy, the strength, the grace, the presence of the Lord that will keep you. Hallelujah. 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 A thousand praise. Praises unto the Lord. A thousand praises unto the Lord. Glory to God. We worship. We worship you. I worship you. We worship you. 
Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we sing? Can we sing hallelujah to the, the chorus? A thousand praises unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. stand there or you can kneel down or whatever you want to do. Just sing this unto the Lord.
wants us to do it one more time. And I just heard him say, sing it before him with all of the respect and all the honor from the depths of your heart. Let's say it one more time. Hallelujah. A thousand praises to you, Lord. Sing it with me. Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, you can be, you can be seated for a moment. So, uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to let the children and youth go and they can uh, eat their snack and have a little fun. I know they're not going to have time for their lesson. And we're going to talk and pray in here for a few minutes. So so leaders, teachers, y'all listen to me. Um, don't expect to get through your lesson or anything. Just, just have some fun here for 15 or 20 minutes. Elizabeth, same thing. And uh, the Lord is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you've begun a good work in this church. And you've only just begun. I thank you, Lord, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. That you're drawing the, those to this body uh, that you draw, that you call. And Lord, we step back and we... We say, have your way. We cry out to you and we ask that you would move in West Texas, in Lubbock, Plainview, in Shallow Water, in Brownfield, and Post, Level Land, all around. Lord, your people, we, we, we cry out to you. We greatly desire to see you move in people's hearts and lives. That your kingdom would come, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us be humble vessels before you. goodness. The Spirit of God says there's some miracles that are going to happen this year in your lives. He's heard you cry. He's seen your humility. The God of Elijah that answered by fire still answers by fire today. The God of provision that answered for Peter when he cast his line into the lake and caught the fish and <laughs> there were his taxes. Oh, my. The God of provision still answers today. Yes, Jesus. 
the God that set the madman of Gadara free from a legion of demons. He still answers in freedom today. He hasn't changed. His power in His Spirit has not left this earthly realm. He's still a miracle worker today. As Audra testified Sunday morning, He's still a God that'll take cancer from the brain of a five-year-old. My goodness, he's, he set you free. He'll set you free. He'll set you free. He'll provide. He'll make a way. He'll save to the uttermost. Oh, there's nobody too far gone. He is salvation. He is salvation. He is salvation. He is salvation. Let salvation ring over Lubbock. Let salvation ring over Lubbock. Let salvation and freedom, come on, pray with me. Let salvation and freedom ring over Lubbock. Let it rain over Lubbock. Oh, that's the word I'm looking for. Let salvation and freedom rain over Lubbock. The salvation of the Lord. The freedom of the Lord. The liberty of the Lord. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let salvation and freedom and liberty reign over level land. In the name of Jesus, we come against every dark power that is trying to work its way in the form of sexual bondage and immorality, even in the level land area, even here in the Lubbock area. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for a freedom, a freedom, a, a, a release, a freedom. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over this church. We plead the blood of Jesus. Say that with me, will you? Just say, I plead the blood of Jesus over Glad Tidings Church, over every member, over every family, over every individual represented. I plead the blood of Jesus. And all the promises and the freedom and the liberty that is found in that blood covenant. Hmm. Now, I say that a lot, and you may say it, and you may pray it, because I do, or maybe you heard somebody else, but, well, what does that mean? Well, it's real simple. To plead is to stand on your legal rights, you might say. So, of course, the big thing in the news is, is what, the last couple days? Oh, President Donald Trump got arrested in his arraignment and so everybody's thinking legalese and courts and arrests and if I if I plead the fifth what am I doing I am standing on my constitutional legal rights of my fifth amendment rights and part of that part of that fifth amendment simply reads that I have the right to basically keep my mouth shut and not incriminate myself. If I've been charged with something and, I, and, and, and my case has gone to court, I have the right to not have to testify, right? And if you got a smart lawyer, he'll tell you what to do. So to plead is to stand on your legal rights. So when I plead the blood of Jesus, I am standing on my legal rights bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And those legal rights 
in Christ Jesus are given to me and shown to me and explained to me in the pages of this word. So we stand on the word of God. We plead the blood of Jesus over any circumstance we may be facing. Because there's no devil in hell that can stand up to the power that's found in the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood is an unbreakable covenant. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the blood covenant could not be broken. That's why God could not make the blood covenant that was needed with any man that was born into the condition passed down to him through Adam. He couldn't do it through Moses. He couldn't do it through Noah. He couldn't do it through Elijah. He couldn't do it through any man or any woman that has ever lived. That's why John chapter 1 verse 14 tells us the word. Everybody say the word. The word, the eternal word, the creator of all, the word of God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. The word became flesh. Jesus was not a created being. Jesus is the creator. But 2,000 years ago in the dispensation of grace as it began, that word wrapped himself in flesh and became one of us. What Hebrews calls our great high priest, our great high intercessor. That's why anybody that tells you that they're a Christian, yet they believe there are many ways to God, they don't have the first clue of what the Bible actually teaches. The Bible is a book of covenant. The Old Covenant, the New Covenant. The Old Testament, the New Testament, as we call it in English. The Old Covenant, the Blood Covenant, right? Hebrews tells us was not good enough that it could make those that came through that Old Covenant the blood of lambs and goats and bullocks slain. It was not good enough to bring us into right relationship with God. It says it was only good enough to put the judgment off for another year. That's why John the Baptist said of Jesus, whenever he baptized him in the river Jordan, behold, the Lamb of God. Everybody say, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. The The sacrificial Lamb of God. Come on. Not just a man sent by God, not just another prophet, not just another good teacher, but the Lamb of God that is God wrapped himself in flesh, came into this earthly realm, and John the Baptist said, Behold, the one who takes away the sins of the world takes away, not covers over. (laughs) And then sweep it under the rug. Because under the old covenant system, for the blood of lambs and the blood of goats and the blood of bullocks, under that system, It could only touch the outside of man. In the law, it was all about how you acted, what you did. It could not touch your heart. That's why Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to be the fulfillment of the law. John the Apostle said the fulfillment of the law is simply this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind, everything that is within you. Love your neighbor as yourself. You fulfill the law of love. James called the law of love the royal law. He said you fulfill the law of love. You fulfilled all the law. Now who is the ultimate eternal fulfillment of love itself? Jesus, love personified. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should put their trust and believe on him should not perish but receive Life eternal, eternal life, the life of the eternal one, the life of God. Hallelujah. So under that old covenant, the judgment was just put off. But the worshipers, the children of God, they got happy, they got joyful. It was commanded actually in the great day of high atonement that they have a celebration the whole next day and that they get filled with joy and that they party that whole week. Wow, why? Why? Because there was one more year that the earth wasn't going to swallow them up. Say, we'd get happy too, wouldn't we? Right? But under that old covenant law, it could not 
touch their heart. It could not change their sin consciousness. Jesus came. He said, I didn't come to do away with the law. The law is fine, but the law as a schoolmaster, as Paul said, brings you to the point of understanding, I need the love and grace of Jesus Christ. He said, I came to be the fulfillment of the law. And now that I'm going to be judged on the cross on your behalf and pay your penalty, die your death, make a way where there is no other way. Now when you're found in Christ, I'm in you, you're in me. Now God sees you through my blood. Now there's right relationship. Now there's right relationship. And now I can change your heart. Because in me, you're going to be born again into another kingdom. Not a kingdom made with fleshly hands. Not a kingdom of meat and drink, Paul said. Not a kingdom just of rules and regulations and dress codes. Not a kingdom where there's a people uh, that, are, that are set aside. And, oh, only these people, only these special ones, only this color, only this nationality. All. No, the kingdom of God, Paul said, is not of meat and drink. But it is of righteousness and great peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. In this kingdom, your heart changes. Your heart changes. That's why Jesus said, in the law it was said, don't murder. He said, I've come to tell you, that's right. Don't murder, but let me tell you where murder comes from. Because if you deal with the root of the issue, it won't manifest. So Jesus said, in the law it says, don't murder. In the law it says, don't commit adultery. He said, I didn't come to do away with that. But I came to change your heart. So you're not even concerned with that anymore. You see, under the law, you had to wake up every day and say, make sure I get those 640 some laws right today. By the time Jesus came law, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the rulers of the teachers, they, they had made all these other hundreds of laws, books of laws, stacks of laws to the ceiling, more laws to help us obey the laws, to help us obey those laws. We forgot. What's the original law? I don't know. That's what had happened, right? That's what Jesus came to fight against. That's what he got so upset about, Right? He said, in the law, which is right, which is of God, don't murder. Don't commit adultery. We could go right on down the line, right? He just used those two as an example. But he said, I've come to tell you, if you put your heart in me, I'll take your heart and I'll recreate you on the inside. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. I'll, I'll give you a new spirit. And I'll change your want to you. From the inside out. Amen. You see, those that were still looking in the flesh, they couldn't comprehend what Jesus was saying because Jesus said, if you even look on a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery in your heart. They said, we're doing okay. You know, the law, not committing adultery. But now you're messing with us because you're telling me I can't even look at a woman. And, and what, what, what? You can't, you're, you're trying to talk to my brain and my mind and my heart and my thoughts now. What are you doing, Jesus? He said, I've come to get into your heart. I've come to change you from the inside out. And that's what Christianity does. I'm not talking about man-made religion and their organizations and their arguments and their anger and their wars and I'm talking about the real church. There's always been a church within the church. I said there's always been a church within the church. Hallelujah. And that church is filled with people that love that walk in the righteous ways of the Lord, 
that love the unlovely, that go the extra mile, that turn the other cheek, that help the brother or sister up whenever they've fallen for the hundredth time. Lord, I thank you that you're building that kind of church right here. In the name of Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus for those that need to be here, that you're drawing them from the north, the south, the east, the west, the workers, the helpers, in the name of Jesus, that you're gracing us, you're gracing us, you're gracing us with the ability to do what you've called us to do. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the loss of this community. That they will be reached by your powerful gospel word. And we just want to be in the middle of what you're doing. We just want to do our part. We just want to do our part. And I thank you, Lord, that you're drawing those to this place that need to be here that you're gracing us, that you're gracing all of your bodies of believers. No matter the name above the door, it's not about the building, it's about the people. And you're gracing them to reach, you're gracing them to love, you're gracing them to disciple, you're gracing us to, to train and to strengthen, you're gracing us to fellowship, oh, and to be the body that you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what we'll do with our teaching next week. How about that? Amen. Now, I need to do two things, and then we'll, we'll let you go. I uh, need to give you an opportunity to give, of course, your tithes, your offerings. That's part of worship, and Make sure the, the bills get paid around here. Uh, so if you want to get that ready and uh, get Brother James here to help us out. And and um, uh, maybe, uh, Brother Ricky, can you help me out? Maybe somebody else, Brother Tanner. There, there's some of these cards back there. I don't know, maybe 50 or 60. Can you just pass all those out? Give everybody a couple of those. Make sure we just get rid of all of them. And this is for Easter Sunday. And I'd just like for you to invite somebody. Invite a neighbor. If you go to a restaurant, leave it on the table. I'm serious, you know. Uh, invite a family member, uh, go knock on your neighbor's door, stick it in their door if they don't want to talk to you. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody take a couple of them. I think we got enough to pass around, maybe two or three, but invite somebody for Sunday, amen. Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, I believe we're going to have a beautiful service, preach the gospel, believing for souls to be saved, hearts to be touched, rearranged, changed, uplifted, pack the house out. God is good, Amen. Why don't we pray over your giving as well here. Brother James can bring those containers up here. And um, we'll just, after we pray, we'll just say you're dismissed and go ahead and worship the Lord and put your offering up here in the buckets. We love you. Tomorrow night, celebrate recovery, 630, every Thursday night. So uh, feel free to tell people about that. You may want to get involved. Best way to get involved, just show up. Amen. And then, uh, let's see, what else is going on? Sunday, of course, Easter. So just show up Sunday, and we'll tell you about the rest of everything. How about that? We'll have a wonderful service Sunday morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you uh, for what you've done tonight. You've touched my heart. I know that. We honor you. We love you. And right now, we honor you. We worship you in a very practical way with our tithes, our offerings, our giving. We bring meat into the house. We, we bring our first fruits. We bring in the first part, the, the tithe, the offering, our substance. We bring it into the house of the Lord that, that your house would have the ability to function and do what it's called to do. In the name of Jesus, I bless everybody that's here tonight. Call them blessed. Thank you that our faith is rising. We're going higher. Order grace and glory. Taking us deeper. In the things of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, God bless y'all. We love you.